Jill, as always, I'm going to remind myself, remind our viewers, there are multiple paths to accountability here. So let's talk about the New York Attorney General's lawsuit. You got Trump about to sit for a second deposition. The last time he, of course, took the fifth over 400 times. Talk us through the logic then of having him testify again. In a civil case, those um, pleadings of the fifth can be used to draw adverse inferences. They cannot be used in a criminal case. Uh, but at least you get him on the record and you have, it's, it's the same thing with calling any witness. You want to know good or bad what they are going to say. Um, I also want to add that to the question of Congress, even if this was a federal prosecutor, even if it was the Department of Justice, this is a pending investigation. No one can testify about a pending investigation. So it's not just that they have no jurisdiction over a local DA. They have no jurisdiction to call in anyone who's investigating the president, period. It's totally improper. Okay, another path to accountability. Trump's trial against journalist Eugene Carroll also starts later this month. Jill, how strong is the evidence against him in that case? The evidence is pretty clear. There are two parts to the case. One of them is defamation, words that he spoke after he left the presidency, because there is a pending case for the words he spoke while he was president as to whether that was in the course of his, and I, I almost can't say this without having a red face because it's so ridiculous, whether it was in the course of his job to defame her while he was president. But he said the same words afterwards. So the defamation mm -hmm. is out in public. It's very clear. I think that that's a pretty strong case. The new law that allows her to bring rape charges, um, even though a statute of limitations might have passed, it's a proper under this new law, um, is more than I think he said, she said, because of her having told so many people about it at the time who will corroborate her testimony. So I think it's a pretty good case. I appreciate that the inanity of that legal argument has brought you shame just in having to, to repeat it. I mean, Hugo, just to set the stakes here, you, the jury in the Carroll case, they will decide whether Trump sexually assaulted Carroll. An op-ed in the New York Daily News argues, quote, there can be little doubt that a jury verdict declaring that Trump is a rapist would be politically devastating. I wonder sort of what you were hearing. I, I mean, Jill's face is my face. And I just wonder, as you talk to your sources inside Trump world, um, if that's even how they're seeing it, Hugo. That's not how the Trump team is seeing it, for sure. I mean, um, I think at some point, the Trump team has basically decided if there is a conviction or an indictment, you know, it doesn't really matter anymore. Um, I think the, past, the point of shame has long passed with Trump. Um, but I think, you know, generally speaking, neither the, you know, New York case or the Eugene Carroll case it seems to be the kind of thing that will help him in a general election. I think there's a little bit of conflating here because the, the, the Trump political team see this and they always talk about how, you know, they think that he will win the Republican nomination. They know about how DeSantis had had to come to Trump's defense uh, and how Trump is surging in polls. Uh, you know, on a head-to-head -head basis with DeSantis. But it's not clear that the typical independent voter in a general election will see Trump and think, you know, this is the guy that we want for president again, someone who is right. uh, a, a effectively a criminal defendant.